I attempt to remove all of the hard and repeated work from the task of breaking a story. Hi, I'm John. Welcome to The Art of Narrative. Today we're going to talk about Dan Harmon's Story Circle. You probably know Dan Harmon, even if you don't recognize the name. He's the creator of two popular TV shows, Rick and Morty and Community. What you may not have heard of is Dan Harmon's Story Circle. The Story Circle is an eight-stage story structure that Harmon developed as a simple and proven way to develop engaging plots. The Story Circle is a fantastic guide for any author, but it's especially beneficial for new writers because at each stage, it tells you what characters should be doing and how the plot should progress. So let's get into it. Side note, bear with me here because I'm going to be Dan referencing Harmon a lot, like Harmon says, Harmon claims, and that's just because these are all his ideas, not mine. So I'll link to his post in, and a video of Harmon discussing this structure in the description. Also, I'm gonna be kind of all over the place with my examples today, uh, instead of just focusing on one specific movie or book. We'll start by explaining what the story circle is then we'll break it down into its component parts. Harmon bases his story structure on the straightforward premise that all stories are circular. A character begins in a zone of comfort, the character discovers a need and moves out of their comfort zone, exciting things happen to them, they fulfill their need, and they arrive back at their zone of comfort. It's more complicated than that, but not by much. To visualize the story circle, start by drawing a circle on a sheet of paper. Then segment that circle into eight equal parts so that it looks like a pizza. Each slice is labeled one through eight and each of these numbers represents a stage in your story. Here's how Har Harmon labels each stage. Number one, the you stage. A character is in a zone of comfort. Number two, the need stage but they want something. Number three, the go stage. They enter an unfamiliar situation. Number four, the search stage and adapt to it. Number five, the find stage. They get what they wanted. Number six, the take stage, but they pay a heavy price for it. Number seven, the return stage. Then they return to their situation. And finally, number eight, the change stage, but they have changed in a major way. Okay, now let's take a look at each of these stages, explain what needs to happen at each beat, and discuss some examples. We'll start with stage one, the you stage. In stage one, your job as a writer is to establish your protagonist. In other words, you want to tell the audience who they are. Harmon claims that the best way to do this is to show your audience a character doing something. It's essential to do this early on so that your audience knows what their point of view is. Harmon says that if your reader is not in a character's point of view, then they are not in the story. An easy way to make your audience identify with a protagonist is to make us feel sorry for that character. Harmon uses the example of Die Hard. Even though he's a badass throughout the movie, when we meet John McClane, he is presented as a man on a plane afraid of flying. We can all identify with McClane's anxiety, so we will naturally put ourselves in his shoes. Or he gives an even simpler explanation of this technique. If you show an audience a raccoon being chased by a fox, then 99% of us are going to identify with the raccoon. Although, if you identify with the fox, then you should know that something is seriously wrong with you. Get help. The first character you show may not be your protagonist, and that's fine, but you need to introduce your protagonist character somewhere in the first quarter of your story or you risk losing your audience. Now let's move on to stage two, need. At this stage, you will show that not all is right in your character's life. There is a need, something missing from your protagonist that they will spend most of the story trying to fulfill. This could be literal, maybe your hero is lost in the wilderness like in the movies Castaway or The Edge, or your character's needs can be internal. In Die Hard, John McClane's need is to repair his broken marriage. You can also give your character an internal and external need. In Castaway, Tom Hanks' external need is to escape the desert island, but his internal need is to return to his fiancée and overcome the hopelessness of the situation. Harmon compares this need section to the call to adventure stage in the hero's journey. Quick side note, actually this entire structure seems to me like an adapted form of the hero's journey. In the hero's journey, the hero often refuses the call to adventure. In Harmon's circle, the protagonist doesn't need to reject the call they can, but the refusal is just a way of increasing tension in your story. If your character's need is internal, Harmon mentions that the character can voice their need during this stage. If their need is to be independent, they might say something like, 
I don't want a new family. I don't want any family. Families suck. Just stay up there. I don't want to see you again for the rest of the night. I don't want to see you again for the rest of my whole life. And I don't want to see anybody else either. Your character will eventually fulfill their needs, but not in the way that they are expected, expecting to. Like in our example, our character that wished his family away wakes up the following morning to find that his family went on vacation and forgot to take him along. Here's another side note on Home Alone. I don't have any text evidence to back this up, but that older sister that was in charge of wrangling all the kids and Mrs. Kevin, she knew exactly what she was doing. Kevin McAllister is the kind of character who identifies with the fox and not the raccoon. I'm just saying. Harmon places the stage in straightforward forward terms. He says, this is where we demonstrate that something is off balance in the universe, no matter how large or small that universe is. Stage three, go. Your character will enter an unfamiliar stage. Okay, here comes the conflict. What is your story about? Because this is the stage where you're going to introduce that thing. Harmon equates this stage to a movie poster. What would you put on a movie poster if you were trying to sell your story? That's what should go here. For instance, the movie Jaws features a shark and it's a about a shark terrorizing a beach community. The movie poster for The Notebook is an image of a young couple kissing. The Notebook is about two teenagers from different sides of town who fall in love. You can't just start with the action. The first part of your story, the you, was the setup. We have to get to know the character before we can introduce a conflict. Now that we have the setup, the shark can cruise into the surf and chow down on a little boy. This works because now we care about the characters because of the setup. From this stage forward, your story enters the special world. It doesn't matter how special this world is, but what does matter is that that it dramatically contrasts from your character's ordinary world. Your hero will get the opportunity to fulfill their need, but they'll go through hell to do it. Okay, on to stage four, search. At this point, your hero must shed all of their baggage. You as the writer are creating a scenario that will strip them down to their core being. Harmon gives another example from Die Hard. At this moment in the story, we see John McClane gun down one of the terrorists in cold blood. McLean is shedding his outer self, the New York cop, and embracing his true self, a gunslinging cowboy. The cowboy persona is the part of him that can take down a dozen terrorists. Here's what Harmon has to say about this phase. We are headed for the deepest level of the unconscious mind, and we cannot reach it encumbered by all that crap we used to think was important. There's no more room for your character's bull. Take away your character's pride, their insecurities, and their silly ideas about who they are. By the end credits of Castaway, Tom Hanks is no longer a time-crunched, overweight middle manager. He's a survivor. Stage five. Harmon mentions that in the hero's journey, this stage is called meeting with the goddess. In symbolic terms, your hero is leaving their dysfunctional mother at stage one, and at stage five, they find a new form of the mother. That all seems needlessly Freudian. Stop blaming your mom for all your problems. I'm looking at you, Kevin, you little sociopath. But you can use it as a way to frame your story and put this stage into context. Here, your hero will find the one thing that they need to be a hero. The thing your character finds could be good, it could be great, but it's probably an even mixture of both. This step is a discovery stage where your hero makes revelations, consummates a love affair, or in mysteries and thriller thrillers, we can get a surprising plot twist. Here are some plot points that could take place at this stage. A stunning discovery, a sex scene, a major plot twist, a confession, a self-realization, or a meeting with a powerful Oz-like character. The point of this stage is to change the direction of your story. From steps one through four, your character has been tumbling downward. Now, after the meeting, your protagonist will be moving upward. Basically, your character should go from reactive to proactive. Harmon says that the goddess should be the undoing of an Harmon says that the goddess would be the undoing of a non-hero. But like Odysseus, your hero will move beyond the siren call, a changed person. Harmon says the goddess would be the undoing of a non-hero, but like Odysseus, your hero will move beyond the siren call, a changed person. 
If they started stage one a nerd, they will leave stage five a calm, confident, sunglass wearing dude. Stage six, take. Harmon also calls this stage Meet Your Maker. He compares it to the scene in Robocop when Murphy meets his literal maker, the CEO of Omni Consumer Products, the corporation that transformed him into a do-gooder cyborg. This stage typically does not go well for the hero. Robocop gets his butt kicked. Why? Because this stage is the opposite of stage two. Because this stage is the opposite of stage two, which is also call, called the Road of Trials. While stage two prepares your hero for their meeting with the goddess, stage six readies them for the return to the ordinary world. At the take stage, we strip away the last vestiges of your hero's ego. Harmon frequently compares his story circle to a journey into the unconscious mind. We travel down through the mind and find who we truly are at the core of our being. On the way back up, we must change into our authentic selves. But lasting authentic change can only take place through adversity. Let's go back to Castaway. Our hero, Chuck, meets his goddess at stage five. The discarded shell of a porta potty washes up on his beach. Chuck realizes that he can use this trash as a sail and finally escape his island. With the help of his goddess, he sets off into the vast sea, stage six. What's the price our hero pays? Well, we all know it, the saddest scene in movie history, Chuck loses Wilson. But what is Wilson? On the surface level, Wilson is just a volleyball with a face painted on it. But to Chuck, he is much more. Wilson is a crucial part of our hero's psyche. Throughout the movie, Chuck talks to Wilson, but he's really talking to himself. Wilson questions Chuck's actions and motives, and he wonders if his plan with the porter potty will work. Wilson doubts that they have enough rope, and Wilson reminds our hero of a failed suicide attempt. When Wilson finally departs, Chuck mourns for the loss of the last tiny piece of his ego as it floats off into the sea. Wilson, the ego, is no longer needed. Our hero is stripped bare, and now he must rely on fate, the universe, or whatever, to do with him what it wills. Stage seven, the return to their situation. Returns can be as easy as clicking your ruby slippers together and proclaiming your love for home, but returns can also be complicated. Look at our boy from Castaway. Once Wilson leaves him, he's adrift in the ocean for days. In this section, Harmon talks again about the separations between the conscious and unconscious mind. The natives of the unconscious and conscious worlds justify their actions however they want, but in the grand scheme, their goal is to keep the two worlds separate, which includes keeping people from seeing one and living to tell about it. So, at this point, your hero must escape the special world and return to the ordinary world. Do this however you want, but make it exciting. Some ideas for the return section include a chase scene, a catch your love interest before they board a plane scene, uh, a ticking clock scene, like when a hero has to defuse a bomb, or a ticking clock scene like when a hero has to defuse a bomb. Stage eight, the final stage, chain. At this point, your hero returns to the ordinary world, having learned the lessons of the special world. The protagonist is now a master of both worlds, but there's still some trouble at this stage that the hero will face. Although the hero has escaped the world of the unconscious mind, something might have followed them back. As Harmon puts it, sometimes Boss Hogg doesn't stop at the county line. Sometimes the alien sneaks aboard the, your escape pod, or the T-Rex starts walking through people's backyards but the hero isn't the same person they were at stage one. They have learned the lessons of the special world and they have shed their ego. Symmetry will guide your writing in this structure. So if you're unsure what to do at a particular stage, look for guidance at the stage across from it in the circle. For instance, stage eight is across from stage four. And what did our hero do in that stage? Well, that was the road of trials. At stage four, your character learned what it would take to become a hero. At stage eight, they will demonstrate the lessons they learned in their trials. 
Armin mentions that this is an excellent time to bring back some elements uh, you introduced in Stage 4. Was there a broken weapon that your hero couldn't repair? repair? Reveal that your hero has fixed the gun or sword or whatever and now wields it with expert skill. Or was there a group of disenfranchised people your hero helped at Stage 4? In Stage 8, that same group could be the cavalry coming in to save your hero. This stage is the showdown, the final battle, or in other words, this is the payoff stage. Your hero has gone through hell and back for this very moment. Show that your character has become egoless, a true hero who knows exactly what to do and what to say. So, those are the eight stages of Dan Harmon's story circle. I've got a lot of links for you in the description. If you'd like to learn more about this story structure, I will leave a link to Dan Harmon's article on it in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to my own article where I break down an episode of Rick and Morty using this structure. And if you want to try this in your own writing, I've made a free writing template based on it and you can download that, you guessed it, in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That can go a long way to help me feed all of my cats. Oh, and check out some of our other videos on story structure. They'll be somewhere around here. As always, keep writing. That's all I got for now. Later, skaters.